This person is about to be sworn in and wants access to the bathroom Nancy Mace uses and that I would use if I were there visiting the people I know in Congress. And I'm sorry, but there's a place for you, sir. It's the men's bathroom. Get out. Get out of the women's bathroom and the women's spaces. You want to do your thing and put on a costume that makes you look like me? I don't love it. I'm going to be honest. I don't. I'm not 100% with the live and let live crowd. I'm really kind of not. I'm kind of offended by it, to be perfectly honest. But I can't do anything about it. And that's life. A lot of people do things that I find kind of irritating. Uh, And I realize that this is in some large measure a sickness that, you know, they they don't have full control over. So, okay, I'm not going to bully them and I'm not going to be, you know, harass them when I see them. But I, I don't buy in. It's their delusion. It's not mine. I don't share it. I don't have to pretend I share it. My children will, will not be pretending they share it. They will not be forced to say she, her when it's a man. And God help any teacher who tries to make them. Um, so that's number one. But number two, now this person is on Capitol Hill and apparently would like to use the women's bathroom. And I'm sorry, the answer there is a no, because the the women's bathroom is for women, and you're not one. And declaring yourself a trans woman, which means fake, fake woman, trans means fake. If you substitute fake in, you'll understand what everybody is saying, uh, doesn't change that. Now, Nancy Mace introduces this resolution. Um, I want to get the the wording right, because uh, she submitted this, and then She's changed it since to say, okay, it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be legislation, but I want at least a rule. All right, it was a two-page resolution to amend the rules of the U.S. House that would prohibit anyone from using the single-sex facilities there that don't correspond to their biological sex. You can't use gender identity. Now it appears she's shifted a bit and said. I just want to see my proposal reflected in the House Rules Package for the 119th Congress that's going to get sworn in in January. That makes more sense. That that doesn't force everybody in Congress to vote on this thing. And it just says to Speaker Johnson, could you please take care of this by making it a rule, which makes perfect sense and protects women um, that I we don't have to fight over. Just make it a rule. This person if he doesn't want to use the men's room, should use a gender-neutral bathroom. And if there isn't a gender-neutral bathroom, well, they should get one built before this person arrives. It's only November 20th. We've got plenty of time. You got plenty of taxpayer dollars to build a bathroom. It can't cost more than 30 grand. I mean, I could find you a contractor who will go and build you a bathroom, a stall that you can call gender-neutral before January 6th and this person can use it. Don't tell me you don't have it or you you can't find the money for it. I'll donate it to you. You want 30 grand to build a fucking gender neutral bathroom? I'll give it to you to keep this man out of the women's space. It is ridiculous that people like Nancy Mace and others have to fight for this. This should have been handled long ago before this person even got to Congress. It just should have been in the rules package. I realize we weren't thinking about it, but you should have been. Now's your chance. Now it looks more provocative because you're doing it in response to one person who declares themselves a trans woman arriving. So it looks targeted. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. That's your problem. You can deal with the upset that's caused some loons on the left on your own time. But what needs to happen now is this man needs to be kept out of the women's space, period. Here's what what I'm realizing and following this controversy online is it exploded on X. Most of the people out there do not know all the facts that the people who listen to this show know. I, I feel like you guys know this at like the back of your hands at this point because you've been listening to the show, most of you, for a long time. Forgive me to the audience members who are relatively new to the show. But like most people do not have any idea what we've been talking about here for the past four years. Uh, and so I've been tweeting some of these things out. You, It's amazing to see people's response like, oh, wow, okay, yeah, that's a, that's a really interesting argument. Like, yeah, right, right. For example that a very high percentage, um, Dr. Blanchard, who is a preeminent researcher on the trans community, puts it at over 90%. 
irrespective of that finding, it is indisputably an alarmingly high percentage of so-called trans people. And, and here I am speaking of those who are men posing as females that are in fact autogynophiles. An autogynophile is a man who gets sexually aroused by dressing as a woman, picturing himself as a woman, looking at himself in the mirror and seeing someone who appears female. He gets off on it. He gets an erection, thinking about it and doing it. I don't want that next to me at work, in the airport, in a schoolroom, or anywhere. And I certainly don't want it next to my daughter. Nancy Mace, controversial though she is, has every right to say, I do not wish to share the bathroom with a man in a dress. I don't want to share one with a man not in a dress, and I don't want to share one with a man in one. And I certainly don't want to participate in any man's, I don't know what this particular person's story is, any man's sexual fetish or delusion. I am there doing the people's business. I have important work to do, and I wish not to be distracted by someone getting off on the fact that he's in my kind of clothing in the stall next to me. You look at Leah Thomas's social media. Go ahead and look at this. The Daily Wire did an in-depth report on Leah Thomas, the swimmer at UPenn, who stole Riley Gaines's fifth place medal and other first place medals at the NCAA championships a couple of years ago. They reported that this belonged to Leah Thomas, formerly Will. Leah slash Will has never come out to dispute it or challenge it. We've reported their reporting on the show. Same, never gotten any pushback. Very open-minded to your denial, Leah Thomas, if if this is is in fact wrong. But they did an in-depth report on his social media, and it is deeply disturbing. It shows all sorts of autogynophile porn. And I'm not going to give you the details, but it's a lot of little figures, you know, cartoon-esque figures in dresses appearing like women with erect penises and somebody doing something to them sexually or them doing something to somebody else sexually. Like this is the thing. It is not this innocent, like, oh, I'm so sorry. It's not like being gay where you're you're born with it. You're not gonna hurt anybody. You just have a different preference sexually than somebody else. This is something that is a fetish that is that can be that can be arousing in the most normal of circumstances in terms of your surroundings, and that you work out by dressing up in a costume that looks female while you're around other females who have no idea that you're in the middle of some fetish. Like, if that's a high percentage, not all trans people, but a high percentage of them. And what Blanchard said was the remainder are homosexuals. They're, they're gay, feminine boys who grow up to believe that, in fact, they, they're girls. And then when they start dressing like a woman, they'll stay gay. Um, look, there's a lot of research on this that people haven't seen because no one wants to talk about it. But there's no doubt in my mind that Leo Thomas is an autogynophile and was parading around that locker room around Riley Gaines and her other teammates who were in you know, masking tape-like bathing suits because they were fierce competitors and the less bathing suit, the better to swim fast in his masking tape type bathing masking tape type bathing suit and was undoubtedly aroused by it why do we have to subject girls to that why i don't care whether you like nancy mace or not why does she have to go through that just to use the bathroom on capitol hill where are the men to support her and defend her and the other women because it's not just nancy mace it's everyone It's all the women on Capitol Hill and all the staffers. And I believe it goes beyond that because her resolution was to prohibit House employees from using single sex facilities other than those that correspond to their biological sex, saying that biological males should not be allowed into women's single sex facilities. Um, Then it says that it would ban transgender so-called women from women's restrooms at the U.S. Capitol which suggests to me it goes beyond just the facilities used by members and their staff. Either way, it must be done. 
build a gender neutral bathroom. I am not trying to bully Sarah McBride, who was elected in shock, Vermont, uh, from what? Oh, Delaware, equally shocking. Um, I'm not trying to ba- bully this particular person. I, I, don't, I have no wish to upset this particular person, but I have no wish to be upset by him either. Sarah, who was Tim 10 years ago, 12, whatever, um, your, your delusion is not my problem. I don't have to participate in it. I don't have to pretend that you are in fact a woman. I don't, you know, I'm sorry you're going through this. I don't think this should be celebrated when he declared that he was female, he got congratulatory calls from people like Bo Biden in Delaware. Like, congratulations. Congratulations on what? On suffering from something that's in the DSM-5 as a disorder, a mental disorder? Like, congratulations on saying, I'm going to lean into that. I just, I, I have empathy for these folks. It must be very, very difficult. And as I've told you, I have trans people in my extended family. Um, it must be very, very difficult. And that's what I've been told that it is. I get it. It's just not my problem. And I refuse to make it my problem. And women across America are going to have to stand up, whether they like the Nancy Maces of the world or not, and say, I stand with you. And the men are going to have to stand up and say, I will stand up for you, even though this isn't exactly my issue. I mean, I like Speaker Mike Johnson. Speaker Johnson, your bathroom is secure. You don't have to worry about someone who is much larger than the average woman parading or than the average man parading in there, posing as a man, but really it turns out to be someone who could crush you with one blow of his fist just because he wants to. Somebody who doesn't belong in there. Like women are in a unique spot. And here's what happens. We had this happen on our show. Who was on? It was... um, Katie Herzog, who is saying, oh, would you want to make a male to female trans person who looks, let me reverse that, a female to male trans person who looks male. So it's a woman pretending to be a man, but the woman's pulling it off. And she raised a particular woman who does look very manly, who's bald, who's got big muscles, who's got lots of black tats all over her, would you make her use the women's bathroom? And I said the truth, which is, look, on principle, yes, I would make her use the bathroom that corresponds with her biological sex. But if this woman wants to go into the male bathroom and people are fooled into thinking that she is a he, I I really, that there's nothing I can do about that. And I'm not, not gonna waste my time thinking about that. But the other thing is the problem doesn't go the other way. That women are not exploiting these permissive laws, rules, and new mores to go into men's rooms and get off on the fact that they're in a men's room or to go into a men's room and actually hurt a woman or a man who is in the men's room. I get so confusing. You get my point. It all goes the other way. It's the women who are endangered, who are getting hurt, I tweeted this out. Go check my X feed. The number of women who have been hurt, attacked, or sexually assaulted by men who are either taking advantage of these rules or who are actually just exploiting them. Look at this graphic. This is a graphic of just some of those who have been accused and gotten in trouble for doing this, for going, for example, into the women's restroom and getting caught taking a mirror and sliding it underneath the bathroom stall divider so he could get a glimpse of the next woman with her pants down or her skirt up doing her business. That I don't want to have to worry about that. Now, there's every chance that a regular man could just sneak into a ba- an airport bathroom. You never know. This is one of the freaky things about being a woman. Guys, you may not know that we worry about this stuff sometimes, but you, you never know. As someone's in there looking at you, I mean, some guys get off on this. But it is a very different story if we're allowing them in. And all they have to say is, it's my gender identity. I identify as a woman. 
And while Sarah, formerly Tim, is doing his best to look the part of a woman, how does it stop those guys? Put that graphic back up there. If the rule is you can come into the bathroom based on your gender identity, how do we stop these guys from coming in? In fact, let me show you some of the trans, so-called trans people online right now who are threatening Nancy Mace, all of whom would be allowed into one of these women's restrooms at the U.S. Capitol if Speaker Johnson doesn't change the rule. Take a look at this guy uh, in SOT 3. This video goes out to Congresswoman Nancy Mace. Congresswoman Nancy Mace, I hope that one day I do find you in that woman's bathroom and I grab your ratty looking fucking hair and drag your face down to the floor while I repeatedly bash it in until the blood's everywhere and you're dead. (laughs) Thank you. I hope um, that Nancy Mace receives this message well. Kisses. Make no mistake, Speaker Johnson and every other member on Capitol Hill, you allow, quote, Sarah McBride in, you allow him in. That's just the fact. What will you say then? What will you say when that guy, maybe it won't be Nancy Mace, maybe it'll be a civilian, maybe it'll be somebody like me, who's just there to take my kids on a tour. We have to go into the women's bathroom and that guy comes in. You can't have it. I'm sorry, but it must be stopped. Sarah is not allowed in, and neither is that guy. And it's a very simple rule. Women deserve to have their own private, safe, and secure spaces. We deserve not to be, to have our risk of attack elevated as a result of a different rule that allows men in. And we deserve to have our peace of mind just knowing that we're in female-only spaces. We don't have to approve attacks or a pattern of violence, though there is one. We don't have to prove that is enough for us to say we don't want it. We want female-only spaces to remain female, period. What's the cause of many health problems in America today? It's simple, shitty food. Food that is engineered to keep us addicted, offering zero real nutrition, crafted by mega corporations that prioritize profit over our well-being. Our food system is broken, and we just cannot rely on big food to put our health first, as you know. If you are skeptical of the ingredients in the food you buy, and you should be, or if you're looking for something new you can trust, I want to introduce you to Kettle and Fire Bone Broth. Kettle and Fire is not just any broth. It's made using 100% grass-fed and free-range bones, slow-simmered for over 14 hours to extract critical nutrients your body needs to thrive. It's high in protein, and better yet, each recipe is crafted by world-class chefs to ensure the best taste possible. This is the bone broth I use, and I've been using this for a couple years now. So with Thanksgiving right around the corner, consider using Kettle and Fire's broths to add rich, delicious flavor. No artificial flavors, no harmful pesticides. It's just simple ingredients to support your health. Find Kettle and Fire in the broth aisle at grocery stores nationwide. And for a limited time, my viewers and listeners get 15% off by going to kettleandfire.com slash MK. That's kettleandfire.com slash MK. That's where I get it online. Or pick it up at your next grocery store trip. Kettle and Fire. Play with your food, not your health. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.